Thank you very much, uh, Chairperson. It was hardly surprising today that the ANC speakers list only came out a few moments before we came into the House. No doubt there was a lot of anxious coin tossing, drawing of straws, and nail biting bouts of rock, paper, and scissors in the ANC caucus room to see who the poor souls were that would have to come out here today and defend this one man's indefensible behavior and his very poor speech yet again. But we did get some people out here, the B team admittedly, but we started of course with Rob Davies, the minister. More excuses, more hand wringing, more apologies. It's not our fault, we're buffeted by outside forces. Snake oil indeed, when one looks at the mismanagement that his department has affected over a goer and other key job creating agreements that we have. He comes here and expects us to come and grovel before his mighty feet because he's fixing Eskom. Well, who broke it in the first place? Your government, your policies, your inefficiency. You mess it up and expect us to be grateful. He goes on about the NDP. Now, let me tell you something, colleagues. He doesn't even believe in the NDP. And he expects us to think he's going to implement it in his department. The nine-point plan, the very self nine-point plan that led to a 74% drop in foreign direct investment last year, Minister Davies. He spoke a lot today about iron and steel. Well, let me tell you something, when it comes to the ANC, they iron over the problems and steal all the money. But you don't have to, you don't have to, you don't have to take my word for it. I'd like to quote the Lord of Latuli House, Mr. Gwede Mantashi. I quote, of great concern are the NEC members who are either charged or have pending cases of corruption against them. As the numbers of these comrades grows, we will be unable to sustain the technical argument of innocent until proven guilty at admission from your own people. And he comes here with his hocus pocus economics and voodoo tricks to try and trick us that the BMW deal is something to celebrate. What he doesn't say is they've withdrawn the three series, which sells three times the models of the X5 and replaced it with the X5. Get real, that's snake oil indeed. But you know what? I'd like to quote Lennon as well, as Honorable Gordy did. Except I want to quote John Lennon. And he wrote a song called The Nowhere Man and it goes something like this. He's a real nowhere man, sitting in his nowhere land, making all his nowhere plans for nobody. Isn't that Minister Davies? We then have the Premier, the Premier of the Eastern Cape, I see he's done a hit and run. Weakest province, how low can the bar go that this is the best that you can bring to the House today? The worst performing province in education, a pass rate of only 56%. Mud schools, no furniture, 45% unemployment, 46% of the national bucket toilets on his watch in his problem. He comes in his Breitling watch, flashing it at the podium, and expects to fool us. Avantu bio cabana. Then, the Deputy Minister of Minerals and Energy. Working for Minister Gupta must be hard. Poor man still trying to work out how he got appointed or why he's here. He came here with slogans. But you know things are getting really bad when you duff up your own slogans at the podium. You've botched the MPRDA, but I want to say I do agree with you, Honorable Olifant. We do find common cause with you. You're absolutely right. The ANC has produced a lot of nuts. <laughs> and given the, fact, given the fact that mining investment fell by 74% last year, I'm not surprised you want to come here and talk about macadamias instead of minerals. <laughs> the Minister Hanekom, shame. Shame. Another planet Zuma inhabitant, clearly. Forgets to talk about his tourism killing uh, visa regulations that he sat on his hands on. Isn't it a shame? He could stand up against apartheid, but he cannot stand up against President Zuma. This, this mighty man reduced to being processing the visas to planet Zuma. Honorable <laughs> Mama Bolo, we know why the Premier of the Gauteng province isn't here today. We know. We know why he sent you, he shuffled you uh, to infrastructure from Cogta because of your poor performance. Even your own party doesn't trust you, but you're here today. And frankly, your corny duet with the minister there 
was so stage managed was like a cheap soap opera and about as credible as President Zuma on the economy. But let me answer your question, Honorable Julius. The reason the Premier of Gauteng Province is not here today is because he hates President Zuma. And he, he is in his province doing what South Africans across the length and breadth of this country are doing, and that's plotting to get this president out of office and rescue this country. That's where the Premier was today. Honorable M. Temunye, thank you very much. It was like reading a copy of the Business Day all over again. Not much, not much substance there, I'm afraid. But you know what? We've seen this week how the President has thrown the ANC caucus under the bus. So instead of the struggle songs that we're going to hear going into the local government elections, I bet you they're taking lessons on the wheels on the bus. Go round and round, round and round, round and round because your own president threw the whole lot of you under the bus. We now know, we now know why you guys bought those very large buses that don't fit anywhere in Port Elizabeth. You needed something big enough, president, to throw your caucus under. But let me now say, let me now say, there's a speaker who's going to come up here next. We know the venom and vitriol that's on its way to this podium. But let's talk about, let's talk about, let's talk about the first person in this parliament that got thrown under the bus by President Zuma in his defense of Nkandla. Anyone know who it was? It was our former speaker, Max Asulu, an honorable man, a deeply honorable man who has the respect of everybody in this house. And he took the, he made the cardinal error. He made the cardinal error of putting this parliament first, his duty to the constitution first, something all of you have failed at, and called for an investigation into Nkandla. And what happened to him? He got thrown under the bus. And isn't it ironic that the, third, the last person up today is defending the first person that got thrown under the bus? And she has something very familiar in common with him. The truth of the matter is, the ANC caucus has lost all credibility. And I'll leave you with the words of Dante, who said, and I quote, that the darkest places in hell are reserved for those who maintain their neutrality in times of moral crisis. Shame on you.